Beauty and the Beast. So Disney could be sued for about 100 to 150 million dollars and more because of the VFX tech that was used in oh. Beauty and the Beast and other movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, all manner of stuff. Have you? Has anyone else heard of this today or not? Because this this oh, was yeah. yesterday. Yeah, we covered it yesterday briefly. Yeah, I've not heard anything well, about you, this. Well, do you want to do a quick um, quick rundown of this then, Andre? Yeah, Andre, yeah, go. The very, the very quick thing here, uh, because this is something that... This is just a sign of like when it rains, it pours, because it affects Disney, but in a sense, they are not to blame for it, at least not directly, yeah. because one of mm. the VFX uh, age houses that they used they employed a facial motion capture technology uh, called MOVA. Is that the name? Because that's certainly what I see in the headline. I don't remember if that's it. But, but yeah, MOVA then. Yeah, they MOVA. used this technology and they used it in a bunch of their movies. Like this, this, this uh, software was first used in the curious case of Benjamin Button and then it got better and better and better. And they used it in a bunch of their movies, most notably Beauty and the Beast. Here's the thing, though. Uh, the company that made MOVA, they had some uh, internal strife. So basically, the guy who owns the license and who created it, at some point he was licensed, he was ousted, and it was his trainee that took over without that being fully legally cleared and everything. And now there's lawsuits over the profits generated for mm. for this technology that was kind of appropriated from the original creator. Now, this sucks for Disney, really, because they have just bought a finished thing that they assumed everything was in order, but it wasn't. And however much it sucks for them, the original creator of MOVA can now actually sue them for part of their profits because he never got compensated for uh, for his technology and his IP being used as a part of their massive, massive, massive blockbuster movies. Uh, Cultured, am I missing something or, or is that the gist of it? I do believe that is the gist you, of it. Yeah, you, you, you gave all the bullet points. It's all accurate yeah. and they have real trouble again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this and this one is not actually of their making. <laughs> this is this is just well, an well, additional kind, freaking headache. Can actually be kind of of their making to a degree, apparently, because there's a few bits and pieces. So reared and cited evidence, it argued that showed Disney was actually aware it was contributing and profiting off of DD3's infringement. So it might actually be an issue of their own making in that regard. Because if they knew that this company had infringed on it all, then there's a I serious think the burden of proof would be that. on them, but yeah. Well, it included a 2013 letter from Reardon's attorneys to LaSalle informing him that he didn't own MOVA, which allegedly caused Disney to back out of acquiring the tech for itself. That could be provable to a degree. But the court found that notice to Disney that Reardon owned the tech was given before LaSalle sold it to SHST in 2013. The order stated Disney entered into its contract uh, with DD3 on March 31st, 2015. Beauty and the Beast opened on March uh, 17th, 2017. Uh, and this court did not hold that Reardon owned MOVA until August 11th, 2017, nearly five months after the film opened. <laughs> Wow. So that's not great. Um, the sole claim that the jury will decide is whether Disney is liable for vicarious infringement. According to court documents, it's expected to argue that it lacked the practical ability to directly observe DD3's alleged infringement and couldn't recognize that the VFX firm was infringing on Reardon's intellectual property. That's not true if this is true, though. The evidence thing. Uh, DD3 was one of our visual effects companies and over a uh, and uh, over a hundred one of four visual effects companies and over a hundred vendors sorry um, that Disney used which used over 20 different software tools other than Mova just for its work on the beast face uh, worked with on beauty Disney argued so again they're trying to I guess 
argue ignorance again to a degree. It's dependent if they um, if they can prove that though. What do we think? It's funny. Uh, I think I know what happened, but uh, but uh, I want to hear what the rest of you guys uh, say first. I think they're almost. Yeah. I think they're caught up in the same kind of situation they were caught up in when they with, with the Bam Tech stuff. They just eventually ended up buying Bam Tech to make it go away. So, but Disney does that all the time. They they uh, they they constantly use somebody else's tech, and then they don't pay for it, or you know they don't really have aren't supposed to have use of it or whatever. I mean, they did that in the uh, the ride attraction uh, called Ratatouille. Uh, the the ratatouille attraction in in uh, the Paris and the, the U.S. park. So, um, I don't know. What do you what do you speculate, Andre? Well, what I think is that uh, when this letter came in, um, I think it was uh, very convenient of them not to notice and not to follow too much up on it, because as it say here, they deal with so many partners, so many things all the time. And then comes like this one letter. And then I'm curious, how many other such letters do they receive with like various BS about other companies they work for and stuff? I mean, a company like this and all the vendors they use has to be quite a bit, right? So how is this one supposed to to uh, to make them pay extra attention? Um, I think it would be very convenient of them to just say this is an internal problem with this vendor and we'll just let them deal with it and move on if it even got the attention of this legal. Because I think that a big part of, uh, of this thing is obviously they it was sent to them, but what kind of attention did it get within Disney when it came there? I'm not sure it got the attention it needed because it it generally in big corporations, and Nick will know this, some things are very inconvenient to notice. When there's mm. a lot of writing on something, when you have like <clears throat> this big, big project, huge investment, hundreds of millions of dollars down the line, and then you have like this, this thing right here, which potentially could be trouble, but it's very inconvenient to notice it and do something about it. I mean, you'd think that these uh, big corporations, that they would just have everything in order always. But when these machines are rolling, sometimes it's very convenient not to notice, deliberately not to notice. This happens. I think that may have happened here. Tom, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I agree with you. And you have a situation here where, like, I was going to bring up a culture I brought up before about Disney using that uh, uh, technology in the parks. Like, yeah, this is not, look, if you think that these studios are as forthright and use things the way they should or don't download things off of torrents like the average consumer, then you're full of shit. Because, in fact, I've had somebody tell me directly from Warner Brothers one time that, uh, <laughs> They were having issues burning out a, uh, a a copy for the to to get a movie put on DVD, and they're like, "Oh, just download uh, Nero." <laughs> they like downloaded an illegal copy of Nero, right? <laughs> so you think that these folks really give a shit? No, and that's just it. They just hope they don't get caught. And like you know, I think culture said it. If they do get caught, then they just buy the problem away. All at the end of the day, what is this going to do? It's going to cost Disney a lot of money. They're going to write a check and it's going to probably go away. But if this individual is not going to back down and he keeps going after him, this could cost them a lot of the money that they made over the last few years. Cause I mean, mm. is this, they use this technology in beauty and the beast. I'd imagine they used it in probably the lion King. They used it in Avengers infinity war and end game. And end game. Uh, I'm sure they used it in a bunch of other movies. And this also goes towards their own stupidity. They've got in-house visual effects companies, right? They yeah. own ILM. <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah. this but at but the same they... time though I, I just want to say a counterpoint actually i'm very glad that they may use some external things which are better like for instance we all reacted to some uh, to how bad some of disney's de-aging technology is and that is spe specifically because they use their mm. own internal de-aging from ilm 
when you have outside things which actually yeah they wouldn't the use area. deep fake yeah they wouldn't yeah, use they deep fake for instance fake, but they didn't because they had their own internal copyrighted thing so actually i will give them credit for this but again so they do it because it's the right thing to do they integrated many many places and then suddenly oh here's a letter saying that things might not be completely okay um, mm. Let's just pretend we never saw this, and if it's an issue later, we'll just pay some go away money. I mean, this is typically how it is. Like, for instance, with huge engineering disasters and everything, well, very often those things could have been avoided because there was one critical thing that it was too convenient not to notice, or rather, it would have been extremely inconvenient for the person who discovered it. Yeah, they, the company might make some changes, but that person, that's person's career is on the line for for putting the company in legal liability and costing them millions and extra work and everything just for letting them know hey, there's a problem right here that's probably going to be fine probably nothing is ever going to happen but i noticed that i'm racing a stink about it that person's career is over that's how it is in engineering probably that's how it is here too sometimes always remember this in big corporations sometimes it's inconvenient to notice these things, especially for the person doing the noticing. Yeah, and Andre's spot on there for sure. Uh, and I know mm. that firsthand. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I meant. Like, yeah. you, you know corporate America, you know how things work. Yeah, That's that's mm. why you have whistleblowers and why you need whistleblower protection. It's, yep. And that's the whole point, right? It's because they see something that's wrong in the company that shouldn't be there, but it's just too expensive to fix it. Yeah, and for and for the person that calls attention to it, that person is going to be in a lot of problems. That's what I'm thinking here too. If someone within Disney had like um, all these integrations that we have, all the stuff we're doing in all these movies, we need to shut that down right now. Yeah, I know five hundred million dollars is on the line because we're already using it, but we have to fix it. No, it don't work like that. No, and that's why we get stories like this. Yep. Oh, oh. Glory. Disney's troubles, eh? Disney's troubles. It's, it seems Fast to be never-ending for them. <laughs> it's like oh, one honestly, thing after up, another, like a down. snowball roll, rolling downhill. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know why? Because there's blood in the water now. Yeah. So now, for instance, yeah. this guy, before, Disney would be like so so strong that no story would, uh, there would be no stories, no one would pick up some asshole suing Disney over something. But now suddenly you can get some traction over it. If you have some yeah. issue with Disney for anything, they're weakened now. Now is the time to to do something. If you want, so if you have some kind of uh, issue with them and you want go away money just to to make this stop and go away right away, now is the time. Which is why mm. all of these things are coming now, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more to come of stuff like this as well. For that exact oh, so, so much more so much more oh yeah um yep and, and that's another reason uh i think universal is smelling the blood in the water doing the nintendo theme park you got the american heartland theme park coming out in the mm -hmm. midwest over here like like i'm mean, people are starting to capitalize on disney's downfall yeah oh massively even doing mm -hmm. the articles they're capitalizing off of it no yeah. because they're getting well, through there's so much bad shit happening to them right now that the, the, the media cannot get out in front of their shit fast enough mm -hmm. to help them. Right. Like I just shared you a story in the background. That's clearly being put out there to just kind of distract from the other problems, uh, by reminding people of how, how hard, you know, <laughs> Rachel Zegler and Haley Bailey got it right now, you know, trying mm -hmm. to remind the audience how bad they are. You know, so they're doing everything yeah. they can to just kind of try and get people's attention away from the 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 the, the, the whole investigation, yeah, the, the, the whole everything else. Legal yeah. problems, maybe. Yeah. Look at Multiple the, look legal problems at this guys. point. Yeah. <laughs> Don't pay attention to what this hand's doing over here. Yeah. Just <laughs> look at this, please. Yeah. Oh, look in every studio on every day, they're going through constant legal shit. Like it's an it's an it's just the way it works. It's the business, right? It's the name of the game, but. In this instance, Disney has had so much stuff come at them at this point. I'm just sitting here waiting for the next big bomb because it's hilarious. We've been predicting this shit for years. 
nobody has listened to us. And I mean, all of us on this panel, mm-hmm. all of our fellow YouTubers and, and pundits and whatnot. And, and, and the schadenfreude right now is hilarious. I'm just loving every bit of this and, mm. and the, watching them squirm and try to make excuses like that article we were just going through earlier is just hilarious. Uh, again, this one, I don't think is going to go too far. They'll probably just write out some checks to the dude, make him go away. Yeah, and, and that'll be, maybe, the the day. maybe from some uh, public funds from Reedy Creek. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, as soon as they got that in their pocket, they'll offer him a house in Reedy Creek. Yeah. They'll use oh, the yeah. profits from all the great movies they've been putting out. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, all those yeah. billion dollar profits. This, oh, oh yeah, because the Marvels were such a success. Those people <laughs> seem to try. They desperately try to claim that film <laughs> was a success. Not even a hundred million dollars domestic. Woeful, terrible, bad. Mm.